Well, hello everybody. It's Miss Darling in the studio. Long time no see. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I just needed a break and wanted to get really involved in my own personal creativity and and just uh, fly with it and not have to worry about making videos and filming and editing and all that stuff. It's very time consuming. And so I took a nice long break and got to thinking recently, well, maybe I should come back and, you know, publish something every once in a while. I don't promise to be weekly or certainly not daily, <laughs> maybe not even weekly. But hopefully, you know, maybe I can reach out to you at least once a month going forward. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, I just thought I would uh, uh, touch base with you and maybe share a few things, uh, catch you up to date. Uh, for those of you who have followed me for some time, you know I'm taking care of my senior cat gadget who has diabetes and kidney disease and so that takes quite a bit of my time i'm trying to spend quality time with him as i know i will lose him perhaps this year we were at the vet yesterday and he has a swollen kidney and i'm waiting on the results of a blood test to see where we go from here hope it won't involve surgery but it may anyway that's going on but back to uh, creativity so I thought I would um, kind of uh, update you on the style and some of the things that I've been working on the last several months and to do that um, well I'll show you some quick little journals that I've made recently and why I'm working in the type of journals I'm doing now and uh, so um, to show you a little bit of variety this is a small journal that I made and the cover the front and back cover is a combination of rice papers and regular papers and some burlap up here and some fabric and uh, just you know collage with a Japanese I don't want to say style but a Japanese theme and you open it up and of course the pages are tall and and narrow and so this is just a a um, random pages uh, trying to put in some artistic pages mixed with some sort of blank pages to give a place for journaling I have a tendency I will admit to get so focused on the art aspect that I forget to leave space for for journaling and um, but you can see this is real random this is some of my faux calligraphy here, and uh, one of my, um, what do you call these, clusters. Managed to get its way in here, and uh, so you can see that it's real random. Kind of, a, I got interested in Wabi Shabi, which is a style that my daughter Swoop was decorating her apartment in. And it's kind of the philosophy that even errors and mistakes and um, broken glass, for instance, that's glued back together, there's a beauty in that. And I just love that idea of, you know, that doesn't matter if it's flawed, it's still beautiful, just like human beings were flawed each one of us in our own different ways and to different degrees but that doesn't mean we don't still have value we have value regardless of our flaws and so that's sort of the theme of that kind of decorating and so I've been spending quite a bit of time making just real random 
things um, incorporating sometimes even on purpose some flaws now this is a piece of muslin that I tore out and frayed the edges and then I've hand stained it with neutral inks and put this uh, calligraphy on and you open it up and you'll see some of the type of, of uh, master boards and uh, pages that I've been making to go with this whole idea of wabi-shabi. And so you can see I've got some artistic uh, over here on the left side with, you know, a Japanese style. And then on the right side are some uh, papers that I hand uh, inked. And they're very random and Almost uh, in a sense, marbleized, but I but but not. And you can see how they're very different, and they form the background. And sometimes I just leave them blank as they are, as they come out. And then sometimes I'll I'll um, collage over them in different ways. Everything is random. You can see where I. Uh, on purpose put you know a fly in there to um, just because <laughs> I mean that's life and sometimes I'll collage something on and so you see it uh, it definitely is a Japanese theme these were done with some stamps but the papers are all original original stained papers that I've made in using various techniques uh, along with a jelly plate and um, so you know it gives you an idea of uh, you know what you can do this has a very neutral theme a neutral color palette and uh, I just you know I, I love it it's you know, there's no rules, there's no one way to do it, and, you know, you just put it together however you're feeling in the moment. It's very feeling-oriented, and, um, you know, so I love the freedom of that, and so I thought I'd show you some of this. It might be something you'd like to play around with yourself, and uh, so that was uh, this particular journal and there's just a single signature in that one now here's one that I made and this is um, some um, the interior of the cover is some of that uh, bubble wrap type uh, envelopes that Amazon uses a lot when they mail things out to you that are lightweight or kind of flat and I've covered it with fabric and you can see that you know with a little bit of um, tassels hanging down and then the inside is like so you would think that the interior of this particular journal would carry this same sort of color palette and theme and for some crazy reason I stuck a couple signatures in here that have absolutely nothing to do with the cover and I don't like that I like there to be some continuity between the cover and the interior so I'm going to cut these out and uh, put them with a different cover but again this is more of the washi uh, wabi-sabi type of, of um, page and I've incorporated some random you know designs bits and pieces sometimes the papers are things that were left over from another project that didn't get used and so I cut them down and and stuck them in here so you can see this has has a Japanese feel to it, but also kind of an African uh, feel to the pages. So they belong in a journal that will have a cover that 
has, you know, something like this. For instance, this is page one of the second signature, and there's page one of the first signature. So I'm going to put them with a cover that has this type of feeling. And I think I was just being lazy and really didn't know what to, to do with them. And so just threw them in here with this fabric uh, cover that just is out of place. So that'll get fixed. And just goes to show that, you know, um, you know, you look back on ideas and things that you, decisions that you made in the past, and whatever strikes you as being uncomfortable and, and not correct, don't be afraid to admit it and change it up and make it feel right. Because design is all about color and feeling, and it has to feel good. Here's a... Um, just to kind of give you an idea of the variety that I work in, here's a large size journal that I made during this period of time. And this is just bound together with some sari silk. And this is again another piece of muslin that I ripped up and stained with various types of inks. Some are permanent inks, some are our ink oxides and uh, whatnot and uh, I got this uh, design to come up and I was very happy with it I feel like it made a really strong cover I just couldn't imagine uh, collaging anything on top of this so I'm just letting it stand as it is and this is bound together these pages are bound to get like a like a three hole um, Bind, binder and you can buy these rings different sizes uh, I got these from Amazon and so I turned it into this large size journal uh, some of them that are more uh, more Japanese I bind on the right side so they open Japanese style uh, but this one I have bound on the left and so we open it up. Let me back out here a little bit. So you can kind of see a little more of, of this. Okay, there we go. So this definitely is has a Japanese theme to it as well. As you probably figured out, I, I love all things uh, about Japan. I grew up there and so I have uh, you know my whole most of my youth was spent there so I do gravitate a lot to that and and wabi-sabi of course is a Japanese design style so it fits right in and it's just real random um, no rhyme or reason no rules and Sorry. So, in this particular one, ever so often, I included some coffee dyed pages. Well, they're all coffee dyed, but I took a, a pad that I had full of, it's the college rule paper, and you can barely see some of the, you know, some of the lines and, and these vertical lines that they have, and I coffee dyed. Uh, on top of that, where the teal color came from, I do not know, but it surfaced. And I just love how those turned out. And so I incorporated in that to make sure I had plenty of space for someone to journal. And then you'll see the, I included some really unusual different woodlock prints that I had never seen before. And I found these on the internet and printed them off and included and really liked how it all turned out. I, of course, coffee, coffee dyed the paper after I printed the images off, so that's why they darkened up and, and look as vintage as they do. And then, you know, I just randomly added other pages and, you know, did some random collage. 
some ink doodling and stuff. Here's a woodblock print that is, you know, in a floral motif. And so, you know, you can put anything together. I, you know, I try to have a, a theme as well as a color palette. And I will often break away from time to time from my theme, but rarely ever break away from an established color palette. Now, it might be a broad palette, might be something very narrow like this is, but I really believe that that there needs to be some continuity. I'm not a believer of anything goes and just throw it all together and hope, you know, you like it or someone else likes it. I like there to be some plan and organizations and, and uh, having your your color palette um, work together throughout to me is very important and so I try to do that but even within a narrow color palette like you see here there's always a wide variety of uh, imagery that can be successfully used so that gives you uh, an idea of three different journals that I've made in recent months and different sizes. The Wabi Sabi style is is very common within all of these because that's what I've been working with for several months now and still haven't got tired of it so I will continue on. But anyway Yesterday I did some coffee dyeing and um, these are in preparation for more of that style of paperwork to be used in a journal. I have some other things here that, um, hmm. I have this little uh, timer that doesn't seem to be working. I wonder... I'm going to stop this so I make sure I don't run out. Okay, we're back. Maybe my battery's dead because I don't think that's working. So I'll just have to keep an eye on it. So you can see here I have a bunch of papers that have already been you know, put together for an upcoming journal and I've been working a lot in it with a neutral color palette. This has a lot of uh, handmade designs that, that I've made, just random stuff that can be either used as pages or half pages or um, you know, torn up into collage, and so I've got, you know, just a, a big variety of um, pages here that um, may wind up in, in uh, a journal or some semblance of a journal, and here I've got something, you know, more colorful. Um, I've got some um, wallpaper backgrounds included and uh, you know just a bunch of random very Japanese type papers um, vintage calligraphy uh, some have you know I've added some uh, washi tape to it like the edges of this are done with washi tape but they're sitting here waiting for me to finally do something with them and so that's kind of how I roll so anyway yesterday I did a bunch of pages and let them dry overnight and I had these two kind of pinkish ones from a previous uh, project and so there's a little bit of pink in here. I started out with that and then I, 
kind of left the pink. I'm going to have to come back and, and do more. But then I just, um, you know, added a little bit of, of um, black, gray tones in here. So there will be variety. And what's nice about doing uh, coffee dye uh, on a jelly plate and this is just regular copy paper. It soaks right through. So your the back of your sheet is done automatically with doing the right side. And then you can determine and you can tell this is coffee dye because you know I can wipe some of this residue away or leave it maybe spray over it with a light acrylic spray to you know keep it so it doesn't get rubbed off in the future and I kind of like that too it's very grungy and and um, whatnot but it will rub off so you know as you as you try different things and come up with different looks and feeling uh, then you decide, you know, if you have to do something to protect certain things or not. Here are a couple of um, wallpaper uh, pages that I have. I have no idea where I got them from, but I thought these two right here could look nice mixed in with these pinkish papers so I'll probably include those and I have um, these probably don't, I don't care for them color wise so they probably won't include them but these were uh, just a, as an example these were um, le is ledger paper and I uh, put them on a gel plate I think uh, at some point and uh, pulled them off probably just to wipe up um, something. I um, don't really care for them so I don't know if they'll ever get used in anything but you never know. And then here were some other wallpaper that, well that one's maybe light enough that could go there. But the, these others are too bright and dark uh, to feel good with this more pinkish um, tone going on here. So anyway um, what I enjoy doing is just randomly doing all sorts of things and then setting them aside and at some point gathering things up and deciding what might work together in a journal of some size and at that point I decide the size of the journal, um, what it will be something full length like this. This is eight and a half by eleven paper. Uh, whether it'll be full size like this or whether I might fold it in half and make it, you know, five and a half by eight and a half journal or uh, make it even smaller. So that remains to be seen. Right now I'm just in the gathering stage and so I hope that gives you kind of an idea of how I like to work. I like to just play around, see what develops, and then go from there. And the nice thing about that is if you wind up with something you don't care for, it may not work into one project, but would be perfect for another project. And also, you can always change it. Uh, if you don't like a portion, just you know, collage something on top of it and make it useful. Now, I'm going to just show you how I got some of those other papers. Very simple, very easy. And then we'll call it a day. So, I have here some Distress Oxide inks from Tim Holtz. And these are uh, kind of, um, well, there's a pinkish milled lavender, uh, a little rosy type uh, there. And then I have some brown tones here. There's vintage, foil, uh, vintage photo, 
gathered twigs and brush, brushed corduroy. And then we've got some black soot, hickory smoke, and pumice stone. So these are great neutrals. They work good together. And I'll probably use a little more of this so I have a few more pages that have that pinkish tone in. And then I also have a little spray bottle with just water in it. And also I have, I'm getting kind of low, but I have this large spray bottle full of coffee dye. And so I'll use a little of that too. And then I just have a piece of cardboard over here that I'm going to lay them one on top of the other. And I do not care whether uh, one contaminates the one on top of it or on the bottom. I don't care if they mix uh, because this is Grunge City. And we, we don't care about stuff like that. So I'm going to start with making sure I have some pinkish tone. So here's some tattered rose, and I'm just going to randomly throw a little bit of that on. I add some milled lavender. And a little Victorian velvet. Now if you put it down flat, you're going to get this wide strip. And if you kind of do it at an angle, you can get a thinner uh, strip. And by turning it this way and that way, you can create different effects. So now I've got my gel plate um, pretty well covered with different colors. So I'm going to take my, my spray bottle and I'm going to spray it quite well until I see it bubble up and make sure I get the whole plate nicely nicely covered and then I'm just going to randomly lay my paper down and I have one of these things that that you can use to press your paper down And while it's still wet, just pick it up. And you can see how the colors just randomly blend together. Had a little bit of that coffee dyed stuff that was still on the plate. And that looks great. I'm looking for pastel. Uh, you know, finished uh, product should be kind of pastel makes it real easy to turn it into good writable journaling pages. So we have a dry section here that we had already pulled from so I'm going to flip this over and See if I could pick up a little more colorization. Just move this around different places. So this is fine. I'm I'm fine with you know some of the a little bit of heavier tinting on certain parts of the paper and then a really light section up here. As I think that makes it uh, very interesting and particularly if if you were to fold a sheet like this in half you know and and that's becomes the background for one page and this is the background for another you can see how how great and usable that is so now we've got to add some more color in here
I'm going to put a little bit more of that darker darker um, I don't know kind of a peachy color there so I try to kind of mix up the percentage of one color uh, you know to give a, a little difference from one pole to the other and now again I'm going to spritz this And now for some variety, I'm going to take this uh, large paintbrush and I'm going to use the handle and I'm just kind of going to streak it through here. I want to overdo it just a little bit. Didn't really pick up any of the streaking. Never mind, I kind of like it when it tears because I'm going to mend this in a way that uh, is very Japanesey and it, and it, uh, it will show and that's the whole point I want it to show. So here we've got a little faint up there so let's see if we can pick up a little more down here. Okay. You see now, you know, I don't even mind overprinting where, you know, it, there was already some color and then putting a, a second layer on just adds more interest. So now I'm going to introduce a little bit of black into the next grouping a little more of that darker tone and I'm going to do work a little bit of this on its edge to create A more linear line. And maybe we'll swish through some of this. And now we've got some kind of a charcoal uh, mixed in with our pink tones. I'm not going to use any of the brown tones with this because they often introduce some yellow when water hits some of the brown tones a yellow comes popping out and I'm working with a cool palette and I really don't want 
yellowy showing up. So I hope you can see that each page that I'm doing is coming up a little different. than the others. So I hope that gives you an idea of that and now let's just um, so you see what I do with my uh, coffee dye. I use this I use this larger spray bottle because I usually have it you know filled up almost to the top. And because this is already very uh, water, water-ish, I don't need to add more water. I just need to plop down my paper. And you can see I'm, you know, dragging some of that onto the other side. That's fine with me. I don't care. Uh, I usually like you know, dying in some way. My papers, are, you know, I like it to show up on both sides. So this has gone all the way through and it's going to show up automatically on the reverse side. Let me show you a little bit more of that. So you can see some of that residue is there from the, from the coffee. And I'm just placing it over there where the other papers are. I can do it this way. Uh, the reason I like using the gel plate is that I get a better, especially if I'm working with more than one color, I will get a nicer blend from one color into the other than if I don't use the gel plate. And I'll show you. But you know you get something like this comes up maybe that's not enough for your taste and you want to jazz up one side or the other you know you can always add a little more you know spray you know this is kind of, of um, you know a more uh, blitzing type of effect more sprinkled and just let that dry and you're, it's going to keep that sprinkled effect, which is nice. I only like limited amounts of that. I think it can be somewhat distracting if it's overdone. And now I'm just, you know, cleaning up a little bit, you know, what you have to do if <laughs> you haven't thought to put any protection down. So, that gives you an idea of how I go about creating my papers. Now, one of the things I didn't show you is, let's say, well, <clears throat> let me just spray down a little more coffee. And then we'll pull a quick print. So <laughs> I will often, I have this bottle of oxide spray came in a bottle and there was something wrong with the sprayer and I could never get it to work. So I kept it 
didn't try to return it and I use it for mark making You can see I can take just you know the interior uh, spraying mechanism and use it to put some really cool marks on a page that I need more of and um, what else oh I sometimes even take a this is a twig that I got off a tree branch that was down at the park and I use this for mark making as well so let's open this back up and say you didn't want to use the plunger or whatever that's called you can stick this in and get a finer uh, maybe even a double uh, line using a twig. You could use a paintbrush, pencil, you know, any kind of stick, uh, really. Um, I even have these, um, this is a very small sumi brush that I use for calligraphy and so I could do that as well and I will sometimes dip that into this bottle of um, oh boy are you dirty I have this bottle of orange ink and you can you can colorize your own ink or just buy ink in various colors Let me clean this up a little bit. <laughs> oh, did that make a big difference? It says Roshizuku Irosh Iroshizuku. I think that's the brand. Iroshizuku Yuyake is the orange color. And I'll show you kind of what that can look like. I'll dip my twig in there. Okay. Well, I ruined this piece of paper. <laughs> well, I could maybe still use it by tearing it up into sections. And uh, whatever. So, let's just smear that around a little bit, see what happens. So, it's kind of a mess, but you know, you never know what you might find useful for a page like this. So, don't ever throw anything away because. You know, you just don't know what might come up in the future where, you know, some of this, you know, part of this, a torn section, uh, could look great, you know, like tearing off that piece like that, that could look great collaged on other paper. So, yeah. I hope that gives you some ideas and maybe inspires you to, you know, uh, do some things on your own. Just play around and have fun. That's what it's all about. So, anyway, uh, thanks for being here. If you like the content, I hope you'll give the video a like and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. And that all helps the algorithm to look favorably upon me. And I appreciate that. So, hope to hear from you, especially those who have been following me for some while. Let's reconnect. So, with that said, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.